I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the area known as Patriot Place, EA Sports set for football at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Indianapolis Colts and the New England Patriots. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Patriots team entering play, and they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the visiting Colts, they come into this one 0-6 on the year, and really, it's sort of just been one thing after another coupled with they don't start very fast the first quarter's really been an issue for them they've got to learn to get out of the gates quicker in order to try and win some games Getting toward the halfway point of the NFL season, Week 7 is underway on EA Sports. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Patriots getting ready on offense. Ryan Tannehill will be orchestrating the offense, the top 10 pick back in 2012. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. They'll run for the first time with Sony Michelle. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play, and it's second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. From the 27, Tannehill. And his throw is incomplete. The intended receiver, Josh Reynolds. And it's third down. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. There are 32 teams in the NFL, and they're just better than 50% of them at defending the pass number 16 in the league. I think if you talk to their head coach, you'll get a nice answer about how much he likes his team and what they're doing. But at the end of it, he would admit there's definitely room to improve. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. That's to his running back, Sony Michelle. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. So from the 36 now, first and 10. The first carry now for the BYU man, it's Jamal Williams. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. They stay on the ground, this time it's Michelle. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. The numbers a week ago for Michelle. 13 carries, 67 yards. He's having a nice season, and he knows where he ranks in the league. Don't ever let a running back tell you that they don't know that. They do. So what he's doing now is lobbying the offensive coordinator all week long. Hey, how about a few more touches? He's one big game away from maybe leading the league. Roughing the passer, defense. 
So a pretty early first quarter roughing the passer penalty. Seems like the officials are going to let everyone know they're taking charge of this game. They're always going to protect the quarterback. Ben Gideon in on the stop. Off the draw, here's Williams. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. It's been a seven-play opening drive, and this is third and short. Back to throw, Tannehill. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So they were looking to throw, holding on a big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're just going to pick up a holding call. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, a product of NC State. It's Jacoby Brissett. And this is a game for grit, determination, and somehow finding a way not to panic. What a horrible start for them. I mean, they haven't won a game yet. So now, as a quarterback, you're not just talking to your team. You've got to demonstrate to them what they need to do to win. He's got to be the leader by how he plays. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And here are the Colts' offensive starters. Ryan Kelly's a great example of how valuable the centers have become in the NFL. A former first-round pick, he was plugged in immediately to be a starter to handle big nose tackles as well as blitzing linebackers and also able to move and get out into the run game and get to the second and third level and deliver blocks. The reception good for seven. It's third down. On third and one, here's Brissett. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Here's a quick hitch route, and the throw complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Still second down. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So after the penalty, here's second and three. You can't block me. You can't block me. You can't block me. On the bootleg, it's Brissett. Into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That was well defended, and while it was a completion, it resulted in a loss of yardage. It's really, really hard for a running back to think to himself, I probably should have just dropped it and saved the yardage. It goes against the entire training that he's had his whole career. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Now 
Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. Open man, Higby the tight end. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Up at the 29 now, they'll head to the line, second and a yard. They'll run it. This is Michelle. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. From the gun, they run with Michelle. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. Let's go, and it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Here's Tannehill. And this one's incomplete. The intended receiver, Sony Michelle, and it's second down. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Now Tannehill. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. So he's three for seven throwing the football right now. Not an awful start, but also not the sharpest. Of... It's caught at the 10. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the five at the six. On third and 10, they go flying past the marker and get nearly 40 yards. That was an excellent read right there. Saw cover one. That means it's just a single high safety. So you know if you throw the ball to the outside part of the field, help is going to be a little bit late getting there. And he puts one out there for a big time completion. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Jamal Williams, his second touchdown on the season. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point good by Hopkins. And the lead grows to 10-0. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Our first update now comes from Atlanta. And the Bills have taken the early lead. Remember to keep an eye on the ticker, of course, at the bottom of your screen for updates on that game and others around the NFL. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. The starters defensively now for the Patriots. They've been pretty good against the pass. Not amazing, but good. Number 13 in the league. So I'm prepping for this game. I kept asking myself the question, what's keeping this group from being top 10 in the league against the pass? And? Too many mistakes, especially little mistakes. And those add up into big mistakes. Big mistakes add up into points against you. A second down throw for Brissett. Looking deep for Hilton. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. To throw is Brissett. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Boom! That's how we do it, baby. They just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And they're just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe mm. a back, someone to help assist, because right now, their quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. 
Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And when it's said and done, it's a 58-yard punt. And the Patriots take over. So here are the Patriots to take over. They are trying to snap that three-game losing streak on top so far with the football here first and ten. Tannehill on first down. And he rifles one incomplete. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. And that'll bring up second down. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. They'll run out of the gun with Michelle. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Here's Tannehill. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Defense. Uh, they stopped him shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Four down, four down. It's second and eight. On second down, Michelle. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And down to the 27-yard line. That one good for 26 and a first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 27. On the counter, here's Williams. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. On second and two, Tannehill. He's going to have the hook up to Izzo. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Roughing the passer, defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Josh Reynolds, his second touchdown on the season. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. This is similar to baseball, where you walk the leadoff hitter and you don't expect him to come around and score. Almost impossible. Anytime a defense has to defend a short field, you usually end up seeing the result we saw, giving up points. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So the drive there took six plays, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They've had it twice. They punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything, so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. 17-0, our score after one. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On first down, they'll stay with Mack on the ground. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. Tackle there by Alex Anzalone. 47 to throw on second and six. Brissett and the catch made by Hilton. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 43. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They'll run on first down with Marlon Mack. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. From the 40 now on second down, Brissett. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. That's complete to Jack Doyle, the tight end. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. They'll run it out of the gun with Mack. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They get it to Funches on the jet sweep. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Brissett from the gun on third. Able to find Switzer. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think it all came together there. In breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Brissett. They'll run the screen with Mack. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. From the two now, second and goal. Brissett now looking in zone, but it's incomplete. The Colts on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and goal. Brissett again. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Ryan Switzer, his first touchdown on the year as they are now on the board here in the first half. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Now Matt Bryant on for the point after. And it's 17-7. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. And after the touchdown, here's Bryant now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Jamal Williams making his way back onto the field. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Nikhil Harry was the intended target, and that'll bring up second down. This is Michelle on the counter. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. 
And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much on, leg man. there. Let's that'll go. be a touchback. Marlon Mack now heading back out there. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. Off the play fake, here's Brissett. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Alex Anzalone just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. After the sack on first down, Brissett, his throw incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time, and yeah, that'll make it third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Brissett sets to throw it. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Good work, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Jamal Williams making his way back onto the field. A good job in the passing game. Decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. And yeah, that time the tackle by Malik Hooker. Tannehill, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Play action, it's Tannehill. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving them exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. New England on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Now Tannehill. Hard throw, incomplete. certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. Returning it is Moore. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Colts will go on offense here first and ten. Marlon Mack now heading back out there. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people, after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Now Brissett, and he's got his target. That's more. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. the passer, defense. 
So they will accept the penalty and move forward. A bad time for a roughing penalty, and they get the gift of a first and 10. Throwing, Brissett. He'll get this one to Switzer. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll bring up a second down. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Naeem Hines, his first carry. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. On first down, it's Mack. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Play fake, Broussard. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Oh, and after the sack, he's still down on the field. We'll get a report when we return to Foxborough. Now Matt Bryant on for the field goal. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Bryant's kick is good. And they're back within a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The Pats at the line ready to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Sony Michelle, 77 yards. And the Patriots are able to strike quickly for six. And with that carry, he's already over 100 yards here in the first half. And partner, you know exactly what he's saying to his teammates right now, right? Especially to the play caller. Give me the ball. Again, <laughs> and, and again, and again. And again. It's not that heavy, sir. I'll take it. Hopkins with the extra point, and the lead now up to 14. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Pushing a foul. Roughing the passer, defense. So that one will be accepted. So now a fresh set of downs, first and 10 after roughing the passer. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Try to get that one to his running back, Marlon Mack. That'll bring up second down. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Taylor into the hands of his running back, Marlon Mack. 
He lost two there, and it's third down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before Lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for Lost Yardage. And Taylor's throw there should have been intercepted, but it's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems he? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. And space opens a bit as he gets it across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. I'm coming, I'm coming. Kill, 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 kill. Off the draw, here's Michelle. And after getting tackled, he's still down and looking very slow to get up. We'll get a report when we return to Foxborough. Tannehill going to throw on third and one. And that is incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, well, the conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. On second down, Taylor's throw incomplete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. On third down, a run by Mack. Yeah, they will bottle him up behind the line, and now will they use a timeout? The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez standing just outside his own goal line. Good open field tackling there, a 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Jamal Williams making his way back onto the field. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Hey, D-line, let's get in there. Let's get in there, half. Not wanting to risk another sack, they'll play it safe with a run. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. 
The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. A lot to get to here as some of the division races starting to take shape as we look around the NFL here in week number seven. Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. In our game has been Ryan Tannehill, who's had the hot hand in the first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So here we go for half number two. The Patriots with the lead, and they will be getting the football. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Now that sends them two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. You know, despite the score line, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road and just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. Taylor on third down, throws incomplete. So coming up empty here to start the third quarter. Already two scores down. Got to be careful. Yeah, I did notice, though, that the captain of the defense patted the quarterback on the helmet on his way out, pretty much letting him know, we know the pressure's on us. We're going to go out there and try and hold serve for you while you figure it out over here on the sidelines. New England with a first down as they begin the drive. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. To throw once more on second and 10, Tannehill, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I don't know, he had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. Well, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. The mental focus. Yeah, the that's thing. true. Gotta stay with it. That's true. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Meanwhile, a throw by Taylor is incomplete. 
Taylor will throw. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Taylor now five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. They'll run with Mack. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now it's Hines. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. On second and nine, Taylor. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 14. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And he may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. They begin the drive with Williams. And a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. A gain of three, second down. Single receiver, single receiver. Hey, you're the From the 16, Tannehill gets this into the hands of Nikhil Harry. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 at a New England first down. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. From just shy of midfield, Tannehill catches made by Harry. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now a 10th carry, here's Williams. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Got a man open, that's Harry. And they stop him short of the first, as he can only get to the 20. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. The following the made field goal for three. Hopkins now to kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, 
that does him no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. The throw by Taylor here, and that's incomplete. They run the draw play with Mack, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. They went with the dive look that time on defense, just flooded the field with defensive backs, blanketed everyone, took away all the passing angles, thus the incompletion. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and that will come the offense as they take over. By the way, third quarter now in Cincinnati as we take a look at the NFL scoreboard. Now you saw the score at the bottom of your screen a moment ago. We got a good one going on there. We'll keep you updated on that one as it progresses. They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Got his man, that's Harry. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Just more of the same there, partner. Guys have just been running free in the secondary this entire game. No pass rush, a lot of passes completed. Been an easy day for them. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain, second down. No gain on the play there, second down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. 60 from the gun on third down, Tannehill. Wide open receiver complete. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. As his guys are in for six. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Here's Hopkins now for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. That time, a six-play drive, and it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. 
From the gun, it's Taylor. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. And you know what's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It's a gain of five, and it'll be a second down. Now Taylor. Now he'll pull it down. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 33. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now Taylor to throw. Funches has it complete. A good pick up there, 21 yards. Taylor now just 7 of 16 passing thus far, but he's got a first and 10. Now it's Taylor. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. To throw is Taylor. To throw again. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions. Have him look at it third and ten. Taylor. Nowhere to get away, and down he goes. Taylor is sacked. Calais Campbell, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. Fourth down, here's Taylor. And this is going to be incomplete. The Colts unable to convert here on fourth down. And the Patriots' defense is going to take over on downs. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. Doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. Offense. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. A first down run, not going to get him a whole lot. Maybe a yard. Yeah, it looks like just one yard there. So that'll bring up second and nine. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Now it's Tannehill off the bootleg. He'll get this off to Jamal Williams. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here. With that type of a lead, clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. 
but they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Now Taylor on first down. Open man is Switzer complete. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. The loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. Now Taylor, taken in by the tight end, Doyle, muscles him off, and a loose football, and it's picked up by the Patriots. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes, but it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Jamal Williams making his way back onto the field. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on the other side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Tannehill. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked out and incomplete. Second and 10 now from the 27. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because... Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a line. He's got daylight. The 40. The 30. Pass the 20. And he will score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. In for the score. And the Colts are able to draw a bit closer. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Now Taylor going to lead his guys up to go for two. Now Taylor, looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. They'll run on first down. It's Williams. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. From the 29, Tannehill. 
And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Tannehill now to throw. And that will be incomplete. There are a good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Give the Colts 13 yards in a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Taylor. Quick slant, caught by Moore. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Again, it's Taylor. On the move to his left. He's going to Taylor hit. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. 20, 10, and he will score. Touchdown, Patriots. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here we go. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, the coaches from all the way up here. They were adamant, you've got to hold on to the football or else we have no hope. Yeah, it's easy for me to laugh sitting up here, but you're exactly right. If we were down there, that message would have been received a whole different way. Because turnovers, they've been a big problem for them. Got to take care of the football. Got to hold on to it. Meanwhile, a throw by Taylor is incomplete. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and 10. Here's Taylor. Going to throw again. They'll try and set up the screen to Hines. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. To throw again is Taylor. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Taylor, he'll buy some time right. He'll run it. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 32-yard line. Sometimes guys get locked into such a groove. What do we call it? The game's slowing down. They see everything happening almost in slow motion. They see the lanes develop. I feel like he's right there. Well, and you want this from your leader, right? With this deficit, this stage of the game, second half, no quit in him. Zero. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. 
Second and 10, it's Taylor again. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. Here's Taylor to throw. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 12-yard line. It's our time. 48. They'll throw on first down with Taylor. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Naeem Hines. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Colts are able to cut into this lead. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Hey, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown. And this is secured by the Patriots. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation, and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. Again, it's Williams. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. It's a game of two. Brings up third and five. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's Taylor. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. To throw is Taylor. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for Hank. Taylor hit. He lost the football. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. Third and long, it's Taylor. Looking for Funches, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. There he goes, left side. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Wow, so wipe out the INT roughing the passer. What a disaster. An absolute disaster. And you hope their lockers are not right next to each other for the post game. Safe to say one is not buying the other dinner. Now one final throw here is incomplete, and that is how this one will come to an end. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory, and the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Pats, they fall a game under 500 now at three up and four down. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Colts... It's yet another loss as they've started out now 0-7. And they'll get an extra week to think.